Oh, hey there. How you doing today? My name's Matt. And I'm with Community Kids at Christ Community Church, Murfreesboro, Illinois, if you know where that is. This is week three of the series, I Am Healed. And in 1 Peter 2.24, it says, By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Week one, we talked about Job, and we talked about all the things he went through, and he was still praising God even in his worst times of his life. Last week, we talked more about what it means to be healed, where does sickness come from, and where does healing come from. And this week, we're going to talk a little bit more, but you're probably wondering why I'm all tied up. I'm kind of in a predicament right now. There's even a lock here. I can't get out of this. I have tried and tried. But before we get started, I wanted you to hear from two more teachers that we have, Brenda and Beth. They have a couple words they want to say with you, and without further ado, here they are. The Bible also says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. So we can claim those promises when we are sick, when we know someone who's sick, we can pray for them, we can pray for ourselves and believe by faith that Jesus will heal us and he will, he will meet every need that we have. I can't wait to see you guys in person and come back to church. I hope in the meantime that you guys stay safe and uh, plead the blood of Jesus over all of you for your safety during this uh, difficult time. Love you guys. Have a great day. Hey guys, it's Beth. I just wanted to stop in and say hello and say that we miss you and we love you. And I hope that everybody is doing well and I cannot wait to see you all back at church. Bye. Oh, hey guys, I'm back. I uh, think I made it worse trying to get out of this and I uh, dropped my microphone. Hopefully you can still hear me. This lock is not coming loose. Anyway, wasn't that really good to hear from Brenda and Beth? Brenda said something very interesting. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. That is really cool. If it could only help me get out of this predicament I'm in. But it did remind me of a story of how another person got raised from the dead. His name was Lazarus. Really cool story. So while I keep working on this, how about you guys watch this quick video? Stories of the Bible. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus's sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I don't know. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus. But Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, yeah, we'll okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, 
he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, The teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him? But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus! But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here. So they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Hey guys, wasn't that a great video about Lazarus? really made me think. I wanted to do our praise and worship part right now. I want to introduce you to someone very special to me named Kristen. Hi guys! Normally I'd be there with you guys doing the moves, but we got another group of kids singing here are going to do it with you guys. Talks about strength and strengthening you. Don't forget to sing along with the lyrics. No matter what 
guys. Last week I introduced a new song to you called I Am Healed. We're going to get ready and sing that song again. So let's get up, move around, and don't forget, have fun. Nothing can hold me back Wow, you guys did really good on those songs. We love the dance moves too. Way to be. So anyway, you probably wondered how I got myself into this mess. Well, honestly, I couldn't quite tell you. Maybe it was me, maybe it's something in my head with things, but we've been talking about healing, and sometimes the devil wants to put us in bondage. And the devil has its way through sin, through our thoughts, through many ways to help keep us down and keep us tied up. I would like to think I'm somebody that could get out of this myself, but sometimes we can't get out of things on our own, and we really need more help than just what we can do ourselves. That's when we turn to God. I think it's a good reminder to watch a video to help remind us about healing, where sickness comes from, where healing comes from, how can we obtain that. I don't really know how I'm going to get out of this quite yet, but I bet you you can help me. Maybe this video can too. Have you ever wondered about how someone gets healed? When it comes to the subject of sickness and healing, many people are confused. 
They don't understand where sickness comes from or how this healing thing works. Some people think that when they get sick, there's nothing they can do about it. They just have to take it. They don't know that God can and will heal them. In fact, he wants you to be healed right now. Unfortunately, there are people who don't even believe in healing at all. They think that God makes people sick or hurt to teach them a lesson. Like, if you sin, maybe he sneaks germs into your oatmeal when you're not looking. Or if you disobey your parents, he trips you on the playground and makes you scrape your knee. The truth is, God doesn't give us sickness. In fact, he can't. The Bible says that God only gives good and perfect gifts. It also says that sickness is a curse. That means that it isn't good, it's bad. So if God only gives good things and sickness is bad, all sickness has to come from someone else. But who is that? It's God's enemy, the devil. He tries to steal, kill, and destroy people's lives using all kinds of evil, including sickness and disease. Thankfully, Jesus is way more powerful than the devil. When he was here on earth, he went around healing everyone who was sick, and he still heals people today. Some people believe that there are certain things that are too big for God to heal, or that there are things that are too small for God to care about. But God heals paper cuts and stomach aches because he cares about the little stuff that we care about. At the same time, there is nothing too big that God can't heal, even injuries and diseases. Jesus can heal it all. Here's another thing people get confused about. They think they have to pray every day for God to heal them, like maybe he didn't hear them the first time. But you only need to pray once, believe that you're healed, and God promised it will happen. The important thing to remember is this. The devil wants to make you sick, but God wants you to be healed. That's why you can say, by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. Wow, it's so simple. I put myself in this mess because I let myself become tied up. Tied up with my bad thoughts. Tied up with the fact that I think I can do everything on my own. But... It's Jesus. That's who I need. So Jesus sets me free. Say it with me, kids. Jesus set me free. Let's do that a little bit louder. It can be not too loud, but Jesus set me free. Much better. Well, now that I realized it, I got a key last week. It was a key to healing, but it's too big. This key doesn't fit this lock. Let's pray real quick. I think that could help us in this time of need. So if you could just bow your heads, close your eyes. Let's give it to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for raising from the dead. Thank you that that same power is in us. Thank you for giving us the power over healing. Thank you for giving us the keys to getting over sickness. Thank you for coming into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. You know, now that I look at this set of keys, there's another key here, a red key. A key that tells me that I have the power because by his stripes I am healed, the blood of Jesus. So let's just see if that gets me out of this. Wow, it fits. Hey, look at that. Oh, so much better. Yes. Oh, that is what I needed. Wow, that was great. You know what makes me feel really good when I figure out how to get out of the bondage that the devil puts me in? Praising God giving it to him, lifting my hands, praising his name, just closing my eyes, realizing that he is God. So we have our praise and worship song, We Believe, by the Newsboys. Because we believe. We not only believe in Jesus, but we believe and he gives us the power over sickness. So why don't we all praise God together 
and do this song. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe When all is dark, you help us see There is only one salvation We believe, we believe We believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back again We believe So let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptation Wow, that was really great, wasn't it? Sometimes that's the release we need, to be able to just sit back and praise God. It's also great reading your Bibles, praying, talking to God, but sometimes praising Him and, and just letting ourselves go and, and just realizing that He is God is one of the other ways that we could be set free because Jesus set me free. He gives us not only the keys to the kingdom, but the power over healing in His blood. He died for us. He did that for us. 
He took those stripes for us so that we could be set free. It's a great thing. Now, this Sunday is Palm Sunday. So I have a video I want you to watch. Next Sunday is Easter, and we will have a special Easter presentation for you. Remember to check us out at cccmurphy.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, many ways to check us out. Vimeo, of course, YouTube. I want to end with you watching this last video to explain what Palm Sunday is. After Easter, we'll come back, finish up our series, and hopefully see you guys again. See ya. The story of Easter. The triumphal entry. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset and they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into tears. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry just as God said he would many years before.